it. He's running. He's running. Which way is he running? Uh, he's down towards the uh, other entrance of the neighborhood. Okay. Which entrance is that that he's heading towards? The back entrance. Are you following him? Yeah. Okay, we don't need you to do that. What's your last name? Zimmerman. I don't even know how I want to start this video because I didn't want to have to make this video in the first place. Okay. I'm tired. Not like physically exhausted. I am tired of the state of this nation. I am tired of how it feels to be a black man in America. I haven't watched the George Floyd video and I don't want to. I really don't want to see that. For eight minutes and 46 seconds of watching a man lose his life, I personally choose for my mental health sake to filter out that type of content. And to think that I have been doing this I mean, since Mike Brown, since I don't know how long. Because, I mean, they keep going. It's just an endless cycle of senseless killings. I want to stop having to have the, the conversation. And if you're a black man in America especially, you would know what the conversation looks like. And what the conversation is, you have your parents and they're telling you what you can and cannot do as a black man. You know, don't go out. Don't sag. You know, don't put your hoodie on. Don't give them a reason to look at you. You know, stay inside. Don't do not do this. Don't do that. Because they're looking at you. You have a target on your back. When the police pull you over, don't yell. Be polite. Be respectful. Because I want to see you come home tonight. What? My father has been telling me for the past couple of days, if I get pulled over, do not be hostile because we can sue later and he wants to see me come home. This is my father. And all I can think every time that he tells me this, he's not joking, he's dead serious, and I know where it's coming from, but all I can think, how many white people are having this conversation? How many white people across America, parents that is, have to tell their child, hey, don't go out today. The cops are killing people. You might want to lay low for a little bit. That's what freedom looks like. But connecting racism and health officially also means those in power have to find solutions. And by declaring this as a public health crisis, it requires our legislators to put together legislation that's going to solve the problem. The pandemic is only an example of how racism affects health. We already know infant mortality among black women is four times higher than whites. You can't explain that disparity apart from structural racism. Racism damages the core of communities that allow them to thrive. So by recognizing it and acting on it, it helps all of us. And one day, maybe we'll start listening to the wisdom of children. Racism is a public health issue. Imagine how detrimental it is to your mental health to be black in America. Like really just, just picture it. Think about a young man who has to wake up every day knowing the conversation that he had with his father or his brother, grandmother, whatever, and then he has to go out into the world, see it all happen to his face, and know that it's been happening for generations. Imagine the level of internal conflict that he has. He's probably thinking to himself, when does it stop? How much longer can this possibly go on? And what's the, even the purpose of living? Being black in America is almost like a sin. It's like a deadly sin because every time you go out, you're judged for what you do, what you have on, the way you carry yourself, the way in which you speak. But you post it on social media, I mean, the list goes on. 
at no point can you just live. You have to have a hyper awareness of your surrounding. You have to have a hyper awareness of why you can't go to certain functions at certain times and, and what county can you not cross over because the sun is down. What does that do to your mental health? I'm not the therapist, and let that be the disclaimer for all of my videos on my channel. Nowhere am I near a therapist. I'm just a young black man who recognizes mental health issues in America, and I want to do my best part in, in fixing those solutions. But right here, I'm at a loss. Maybe you have a better answer, but I'm, I'm genuinely, I don't know what to say to someone who says, I'm depressed because I'm black in America. If you continue to watch my channel, look at my Instagram with the different side freelance filmmaking work I do, you should expect from me that all of my art will represent the black male experience. I create videos, I create content that is specific to the black male experience and black people in general so that we can change the narrative of what it looks like to be black in America. That's my role as a creator. And if you want to support me in that mission, subscribe to the channel and be expecting more content on the way. I don't want to have to make this a video again, but I'm afraid I'm going to have to. Stand up on your platforms. Speak up. Now more than ever, it's your time to use whatever creative talents that God has possessed you with to be vocal. That's it. That's the message. I've been missing you on the highway, gotta get to you. We can talk about it, I got issues too. I got issues too. And I got this to lose. You just wait too precious to be.